should you run out and buy the new Lexus GX 550 or should you hold on for dear life to your existing Lexus GX 460 or whatever you're driving because you now know that Toyota is having problems with their twin turbo V6 engine on their Tundra that's also going in the Lexus GX 550. It just takes the stress out of the situation. Go ahead and get it uh, aftermarket. Box slide is kind of. All right, it seems like we've bashed the heck out of our Lexus GX 460 off road over and over, and we can still rely on it. I feel like we can go anywhere in that thing. In fact, it feels like we went everywhere, bashed it off road a bunch of times, but we really only have 25,000 miles on that thing. And we're very confident that, that this GX460 is going to go forever. Can the same thing be said about the new Lexus GX550? Because let's be honest, Toyota is having some issues with their Tundra engine, and that is essentially the same engine that the Lexus GX550 gets. I'm talking about the V35A twin turbo V6 engine from Toyota. That's an engine that the GX550 is going to get, but the Tundra version of that engine is blowing main bearings because according to Toyota, they left machining trash in during the process and it basically fused to the number one main bearing and caused a bunch of issues. So those engines need to be replaced and as you all know by now, they're under recall. But Technically, the GX550 is not under that recall, but is that going to bring GX550 owners peace of mind? Especially the sort of peace of mind that you deserve and come to expect when you go out and buy a Toyota or Lexus product. Let's be honest, we don't buy Toyotas and Lexuses because they look cool. They're awkwardly conservative. They're horrible, you know, they're, I won't say they're horrible, <laughs> but the, you know, they don't, they don't touch all the nerves and, and, and hit all the buttons if you're an American. It's awkwardly conservative. You know, you kind of look past that to get to the reliability part and that's what makes them cool. So that's their selling point. That's what I'm trying to ramble there. So if you're going to get a new Lexus GX550 and you know their engines in another platform are having issues, should you go out and get that or should you be worried? And the truth of the matter is most people are worried. This is very anti-Toyota and Lexus to be having major problems, let alone an engine recall on one of their popular American vehicles, talking about the Tundra. And so even though this is not technically a GX550 recall. This recall affects the LX600, which is Lexus's flagship SUV, and the same engine is also in the world market Land Cruiser 300 and a few other vehicles we'll talk about in a second here. So it makes sense that one would be worried if they're considering this GX550 because the recall is not official on the GX550, but right now they're being held for QC holds either at the docks when they're coming off the boats and that's all we know from Toyota and Lexus is that there's a lot of QC holes on these GX550s and nobody knows what, what's really going on. But you can put two and two together and deduce and speculate and it is just that, that the GX550 engines may be having some problems. But first, I want to get something out of the way and this is a common question. When I talk about the twin turbo V6 that's having issues in the Tundra, the recalled engine that everybody is worried about now, do realize that it's been out since 2017 on the Lexus LS500. When I say that, a lot of people like to say and come back with, well, you see what Toyota did? They screwed up. They put a car engine in a truck. They put that LS500 Lexus sedan twin turbo V6 into the Tundra and they put it in a truck and you can't put a turbocharged stressed V6 engine in a Tundra truck. That's what went wrong and there's a design flaw. First and foremost, there's no evidence of a design flaw in this engine. There's no evidence, not proof, evidence that we don't see anything inside the engine breaking or malfunctioning. 
Toyota's official excuse of trash in the engine makes the most sense now based on the evidence we see on YouTube of techs taking these engines apart. It coincides with Toyota's story. But something more important, do realize that the twin turbo V6 is in one car over here and five trucks over here. That means that the twin turbo V6 engine was engineered from the get-go to be a truck engine. How do we know? It's in five trucks. Six if you count the Sequoia as a hybrid as a separate model. But honestly, it's in five trucks. Only one car. So from the jump off, the engineers were tasked with designing a truck engine because Toyota executives went to the engineer and they said, we need an engine that's gonna power five trucks. We got the Land Cruiser 300 in the world market. We got the Lexus LX 600. We've got the Toyota Sequoia. We've got the Toyota Tundra and we've got the Lexus GX 550. This is a truck engine. They simply put it in the sedan first. But make no mistake, you've got a truck engine. The engineers didn't wake up one day and decide that they're gonna stick a car engine in five trucks, call it a day, and then ask for a raise the, day late, uh, uh, the next day. Hey, <laughs> you know, it's a truck engine, okay? It's going into five, <laughs> five truck vehicles. So that's all you need to know about that as far as was it designed to handle the towing and being in a truck application? Of course, it's a truck engine. So does that make you feel any better about this engine now that, uh, that the Tundra's blown out? Probably not. And Toyota's got to do a lot of PR and a lot of backtracking. And it's unlike a Japanese company, any Japanese company, to kind of babysit and coddle consumers through this. I know Japanese like to bow humbly and this sort of thing, but Americans really don't respond to that. Americans respond to coddling because Americans are very fearful and fear-based and distrustful of everything. The Japanese culture is different. There's a shame culture and there's a pride in what they do. They don't like screwing people over and they're, they're not going to coddle you through it. They're going to fix the problem if they say, hey, we know there's a problem. We know the Tundra's having issues. We did a recall. We're going to give you a notice and we're going to fix the issue. So there's not going to be a lot of coddling to make Tundra owners or GX 550 owners feel better. There's not going to be a lot of PR coming, which is why we hear nothing from Lexus or Toyota to help those Tundra owners or potential GX 550 buyers feel any better. They're just going to say it's not affected by the recall and that's all there is to it. Whether you believe Toyota and Lexus or not on that, that's up for you to decide. And that's kind of what this video is about, and it, which is you're going to have to roll the dice essentially if you're getting a GX 550 this soon. In other words, the first model year of the GX 550. This is especially so, of course, now with the Tundra and LX 600 engine recalls. This is this is real a real recall going on. And so again, even though they're saying yeah, it's not doesn't affect the GX 550 it's more evidence to suggest that it might not proof but evidence that it might or at least i should say logic that it might for obvious reasons they're the same engine more or less the turbocharger on the gx 550 is a little smaller and that's supposedly the only difference What's the magical, warm, and fuzzy answer for this? <laughs> there is none. Nobody can give you a magical answer. Most people would agree, if you get a GX 550, you are rolling the dice on this engine, and that the common sense thing to do, and now even the logical thing to do in light of the Tundra recall, is to hold your horses, hodl, <laughs> hang on to what you have, and wait for all these bugs and shenanigans to be worked out. I know for some people that's harder to do because it's time to get a car. Whatever they're driving, whatever they're in, it's time. It's that time to get a car. But if you can and you're willing to uh, hold out a little bit longer, I think you'll see in the future that Toyota will work their problems out. Yes, I know. Everybody thinks the sky is falling, blah, blah, blah. But the, the Bulletproof 4.6 had engine recalls when it came out. 
the bulletproof 5.7 V8 engine had engine recalls when it came out. It's just what happened. Nobody remembers that because social media wasn't a thing, at least the way it is now, way back in 2010 and prior. Yes, it was there, but it didn't spread like wildfire on YouTube. YouTube was different back then. You, you all know that. So it's kind of being blown out of proportion because if we could turn back the clock to then, we'd see the same recalls, but we wouldn't see people on YouTube hanging around and orbiting the dealers, screaming and hollering and getting their sticky, grubby fingers all over somebody's new car to, you know, getting their, yeah, let me get it and get it dirty and talk trash about the Tundra. <laughs> Think of the poor people that have to buy those cars that you're rolling and getting your sticky fingers all over just so you can whine on YouTube about car. <laughs> My point of that, I'm making fun of it. It's all good. What I'm saying is that didn't exist when the 4.6s got their quarter million recalls and Tundras blew up uh, 30 engines confirmed, but the recall went into thousands. Say what you will about, you know, well, the, 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 this new twin turbo V6 was deeper in the bearings, blah, blah. It's, it's an engine recall. The engine's not working. If you were a Tundra owner back in 2010, would you be happy that the valve screen <laughs> springs destroyed your engine or the crankshaft flew off on your 5.7 or your 4.6 or whatever the heck was going on with it? It's defective either way. It's seen as a bigger deal now simply because of the power and influence, sorry I had to say that cringe word, of <laughs> social media today. So it spreads like wildfire. What's concerning to me is how Toyota cannot adapt and, and kind of suppress a lot of that negative amplification by speaking their PR they don't know how to do that and again part of that is the Japanese culture they're not gonna talk big game they're gonna do big game so honestly the fact that Toyota isn't blah 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 blah, blah politics politics excuse excuse yada 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 that says to me that they're actually really gonna fix the problem that's just what Japanese culture is it's kinda hard to explain but that's what they do. They're not going to they're not going to talk you through it. They're just going to make it better. Can I prove that? No. But the recall notices officially will be coming out and rolling out this week and into next month and I think most Tundra owners will be happy with the response. But as far as GX550 goes, most people will agree you're rolling the dice if you can wait, wait, let them sort out the problems like the old bulletproof V8s. And believe it or not, just twin turbo V6 will be proven to be bulletproof just as much. How do we know? Because they test these things on dynos in laboratories. They thrash them off-road, and Toyota follows a principle called <laughs> drive it, break it, make it better. And they keep doing that over and over. Is it perfect? Of course not. In the real world, you have production issues like the robot that screwed up and left the trash inside the engine that ruined the number one bearing. But that happens. Look on the National Highway uh, Traffic and Safety Administration's website. Every last manufacturer is under some sort of recall right now. All of them. <laughs> you know recalls happen daily. So it happens. It's not the recall that's the issue. It's will it be fixed? And I think you'll see it be fixed satisfactorily and the engine will live up to Toyota's reputation of quality, durability, and reliability. But as it stands right now, it is a roll of the dice with these GX550s.
real I should have known that something wasn't right in walking The biggity biggity boom was just ticking and clocking A night boy in plaid is passed from his dad Another straight in the fight man But he wasn't from the right clan Stop all the nonsense defenses My defense, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I know the mood is daily dense Time has passed on but it's been a million days With the nights and divided running round in haze Since the fence is my defense, oh yeah, yeah, I know the mood is daily dense. Time has passed on, it's been a million.